Gemini 3 was released on November 18th, and today is November 29th, so it's been 11 days, but already people have been building incredible things, and especially designing incredible things using Gemini 3. And if you just go on Twitter and you search for Gemini 3, you get different games, different 3D games, different simulators, and different interactive ways of learning. But not only that, you also get these insane UI designs that have been created with AI using Gemini 3. And in today's video, what I want to do is I want to show you a few of the prompts that I've been using in the past weeks whenever I stream. And these prompts are specifically tailored to help you out when it comes to animation and interfaces. So for example, hero section animation or button animations or specific text transitions or scroll animations. So if you guys are interested in that, feel free to join us today and let's get started. But before we dive into today's video, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world. And we get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different topics, different challenges in our lives. So if you guys are interested in joining, feel free to join the Discord link down in the description below. Now I organized a file for you guys using Magic Path. Magic Path is my go-to design tool when it comes to AI. Gemini 3 is of course integrated into Magic Path. So you're going to get these amazing animation results inside of Magic Path. And we're going to start off with hero sections, right? So hero sections are obviously the first thing that you see when, when you see a website, for example, you see the, the text of the hero section, you see the, the, the colors, you see a glimpse of the product of what it is. And usually when you create a hero section with AI, you get a nice subtle animation like this, but you don't really have control because you didn't really prompt it for any types of animations. So the first prompt here is a more of a simple one. Animate the hero section when it enters a viewport, fade in, slide up and slight blur. So if I click on this one, for example, click on preview, you're going to see that it slides up and we have a quick little blur in animation. We also have these texts over here, stagger, stagger all child elements by 0.15 seconds, use animation fill mode both. So what that means is that it's going to animate in the same way as it animates out. So if I were to add a, a, a second section underneath this, it'll animate out in the same speed, the same style as it animates in. And I just gave this prompt very simply to this hero section. But inside of Magic Path, we have these themes over here. So basically, if you're part of a company, for example, if you work for Discord, for example, and you want to have like your Discord theme, you can apply it here inside of Magic Path. In this case, I use this IBM Carbon theme, so IBM Carbon Light Mode. And then you can basically get the same type of animation, but with your company's theme. So if I were to click this, click on a preview, as you can see, we get our exact same animation, but now with this new step that integrates our company's colors, fonts, spacing, and so on and so forth. Now, the next animation that we're seeing here is called a clip path reveal animation also happening in the hero section, but this time it's like a background animation. So as you can see, column by column from left to right, and you can change this. You can make this go from the center to left and right, or you can make it start from the right to left, however you want. One second duration, smooth cubic bezier easing, do not modify content. So nothing modified here in the middle and no theme applied to this. We get something like this, right? We have these different columns. Um, animating like this in the beginning. And this is the other example, this time with a more of a white background. And again, if we apply a specific style, let's choose our IBM theme. It gives us the same fonts, the same spacing, the same button styles, but also with the specific hero section background animation. Next animation when it comes to hero sections is a soft spotlight effect to the hero background. So if I were to basically put my cursor over here, you can see that we have some type of light little spotlight following our cursor, going behind the buttons, which is looking very nice. And basically this is the prompt, add a soft spotlight effect to the hero background that follows the cursor, keep opacity low and edges very soft, do not change the layout. And we can do the same thing again with this IBM design system, this theme over here, you can see this light little blue um, background over here. And the same thing happens with a dark mode, right? This is more of a dark mode, but with the same theme applied to it, this IBM theme. So we get the same fonts, same colors, but now with this nice little blur effect behind the buttons and, and, and behind the text. Now, these are all different sections or different types of concepts of animations in different components, but how can we bring them all together, right? Well, this is where we come to the next step. Inside of Gemini 3, you can build out 3JS components. So for example, we have this nice particle animation that starts from a circle and then transforms into a different shape. As you can see, we make this like into a square, uh, a cube shape, and then it turns into like this donut shape, and then it turns into like a spiral, or we can have 
some type of orb like this that's also interactive, has this nice glass effect with these with these lights inside. And then what you can do is you can simply add them to the background of a hero section, for example. So let's say that this is the hero section of a specific site that you're trying to build. You can basically just build out that hero section like we did before, and then basically mention these components as the background of that hero section. So for example, we can get this and we can duplicate this over here, bring this down over here like so. And then we can see that the name of this specific component is 3D Parametric Orb. So over here, we just click on this and we can say add the at 3D. And then we have to look for it, 3D Parametric Orb behind the text of the hero section. And we just want to click on enter. And then as you can see, we zoom in and we get that exact same hero section from before, but now with that orb in the background. And this might not be the best design, you know, this is just a quick example for me to show you, but I hope you're getting some ideas of what you can use Magic Path for, right? So you can create these nice little concepts and basically integrate them into your own design. So obviously we have these two examples over here, and we can also get some, some uh, examples like this, which are also interactive, like on hover. And we can also switch to position. They don't have to be behind the actual hero section. We can put the hero section content to the left, put the actual design or the, the animation on the right so that it has a little bit more of a attention to your eye once you see this particular section. And in order for you to get the best out of these, I would really recommend you put the keyword 3JS in your prompt. So T-H-R-E-E-J-S. Now the next things here are buttons, right? So I created four different buttons with four different prompts. This one is more of a border beam button. I'm gonna show you right now all of these in a sec. Border beam, magnetic button, ripple button, globe pulse button. And as you can read from the prompt, add a one pixel border beam animation around this button on hover. Beam moves clockwise with a subtle glow, keep size and text unchanged. So I basically changed this a little bit. Um, it gave me like this, you know, uh, beam that would move around, but I ended up liking just one subtle movement at the bottom. I'm gonna show you how it looks like. So if I click on preview and I just hover over this button, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that we have this little line that animates and then there's like a little subtle glow behind it. So that's kind of what I got. But if we go back to V1, which was the first version that it gave me, and we zoom in a bit, you can see it gives us like this little hover effect. It stopped after one version. So in version two, it would repeat itself but then I slowly managed it to actually make it go around. But then again, I think it's just neater if it's just one line glowing and that's it. Now this next one, make this button magnetic, follow the cursor by 10 to 15 pixels on hover and snap back smoothly. So I'm just gonna click on preview. And as you can see, we have this like snap animation. So whenever my, my mouse hovers over this button, that we have this like magnetic feel to it. Next one, and this is a little bit more special because I took it took me a little bit more time to actually get this right. Add a hover ripple animation to this button. On hover, create a cir circular ripple starting at the cursor position. So you can create a ripple that starts like in the center, but the that the ripple starts in the cursor position is actually what makes it special. It expands to the edges and fades out, has low opacity and soft easing, right? This keyword soft easing is very important when, when you know, prompting animations. So if I were to click on this and look at the preview, as you can see, my cursor location creates this ripple effect. And remember when we mentioned 3JS, so if you mentioned 3JS in this uh, particle, like little ripple animation, right? You can say, you know, use particles with 3JS and then replace that with the waves and you get something like this, right? You can do the same thing with like a more of a fire effect or something like that. But these are just like cool little examples of how you can, you know, integrate 3JS with these basic animations. Anyways, next prompts have to do more with like card sections. So for example, we have like a stack of cards and we have this nice hover effect. So as you can see, it just pops out very cleanly. So create a card row on and on hover, animate each card, scale to 1.02, translate. So this translate keyword over here is very important because you want to translate it Y. So if I were to hover over it, it goes up on the top, not on the side. And then it creates a stronger shadow that, you know, imitates an actual live card, smooth cubic bezier easing for the speed. And we get a nice movement like this. And again, you can apply that to an existing theme. So this one is for the IBM theme. As you can see, we get the exact same thing. Next thing on the list is something more with like gradients at the end. As you can see, this is like a simple 
logo section with testimonial uh, brands, right? Add a slow infinite marquee animation to, the, to this logos row. Use alpha mask clipping for clean edges, right? So that's another nice keyword. You can use the same thing for, for something like this if you wanted to add some gradients on the sides. And then I have a few other animations that we can look at. So I, I created this one hero section or this one page, as you can see over here, with this nice design inside of Magic Path. And it says over here, when the hero section enters the viewport, fade it in and add a soft glowing highlight behind the section. Glow should be subtle, not distracting. So if I were to click this on preview, and if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that there's a very, very subtle glow behind the text. Let me just show you again. So over here, text pops up. You see like a small little glow behind the actual text and this like little interface over here. You can add, you can also ask the AI to add parallax effects to, to particular sections. So for example, this one, if we scroll down, we have this one image over here. And as you can see, I can scroll through it and we have this nice parallax effect. Also when adding new sections to your pages, for example, we wanna add like a timeline section. We can ask it to add a timeline section and then animate the items. This is where we can kind of visualize what we what we want to animate it like. So alternate slide in from left and right on scroll with slight fade and a 0.1 second stagger. So if we click on this and just preview that, scroll to that section, we can kind of see that we have these little cards that animate just like we wanted it to from the prompt. And again, just like we saw over here with this like blur effect, we can apply that to other designs, right? So we have already like an existing website over here, a landing page and we can just use that same prompt. And then if I were to press, press play, we have this nice glow. We also have this nice blurring effect with the text. And it gives us like a nice, unique little fade in animation with this blur effect. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any more comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below. And like always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.